In this Elden Ring video, I'm going to be showing you my Colossal Crusher build. This is basically a level 150 version of the Colossal Guardian build that is a 100% purely strength focused build that uses a Colossal weapon. So first up, let's talk about the weapon that I'm using for this build. I am using the Giant Crusher, which is a Colossal weapon that's kind of a hammer looking weapon, does strike damage, and it scales phenomenally with strength when set to the heavy affinity, and since we have such high strength with this build, that gives us an absolute ton of damage. Another reason that we want this build is because we're using Troll's Roar, the Ash of War with this build, and it scales with strength and your weapon upgrade and weapon level, etc. So the more strength we have, the more damage that ability does. So it's kind of win-win. We get more damage out of the weapon and we get more damage out of Troll's Roar when we use it. So that's why we went with this weapon. The other weapon that we're using for this build is the Highland Axe. This actually increases the amount of damage you do with Roar attacks by about 7.5% if I'm not mistaken. We don't actually use it for attacks, we just hold it in our offhand, don't even upgrade it in order to increase that damage. The reason that we're able to carry this in the offhand and the reason we really want to is because when you're two-handing the Giant Crusher, you don't really care what's in your offhand, so you can put really anything there that you want. But the Highland Axe is going to increase the damage of Troll's Roar and it's going to increase the damage of the follow-up attack afterward, so it's going to kind of give you a good amount of damage in both of those cases. When it comes to armor for this build, you really want to use the heaviest armor that you can with the best possible poise. And the reason for that is because when you use Troll's Roar, it has a very long cast time, very long cast animation. And if you get staggered out of it when that happens, or you don't get it off all the way, then you're going to be in a really bad spot. You'll never be able to get it off. And you usually stagger enemies if you can hit them with Troll's Roar. So even if they like bump you or hit you even like, you know, with a regular attack or even like a pretty heavy attack, if you have high enough poise, you'll still hit them with Troll's Roar, you'll be able to stagger them. And then if you're using something like the Assassin's Crimson Dagger and the Assassin's Cerulean Dagger, you'll be able to regain health and regain FP. So it won't even matter that they hit you anyway, because you're wearing such heavy armor that it usually doesn't do that much damage. And then you just heal it back up and heal the cost of the, you know, regain most of the FP that you use. Now, as you get further and further into the game, bosses tend to do more and more stagger damage. I mean, some of the early ones do very good stagger damage too, depending on the weapon that you're using. So you'll need to get more and more poise if you want to withstand their attacks. Otherwise, you'll have to rely on dodging them. And, you know, ways that you can do that are getting something like the Bull Goat set, which has 100 poise if you use all the pieces, and then using something like the Goat Talisman in order to increase your poise even further. That will give you 133 poise. You should be able to tank almost any hit with that and still continue your attack, but you're going to be extremely heavy between that and the Giant Crusher, so you'll need a lot of points and endurance if you're going to use that setup. When it comes to talismans for this build, I have a couple different setups. When I'm running around on the landscape and, you know, in dungeons just attacking regular enemies when I'm not doing, like, boss fights, I basically have the Assassin's Cerulean Dagger equipped. I have the Assassin's Crimson Dagger equipped. I have the Dragon Crest Great Shield equipped. And I have the Roar Medallion equipped. And the reason for that is that, again, you're going to go around and you're going to use the Roar. And if enemies hit you, then you're just going to poise through it. You're going to do a critical attack and you're going to regain your health and FP from that critical attack. And one of the great things about Colossal Weapons, not Colossal Swords, but Colossal Weapons, is that they tend to do two procs of Assassin's Cerulean Dagger and Assassin's Crimson Dagger. I don't know if that's a bug or if that's intentional for these weapon types, but they actually trigger this effect twice. That means you're going to heal for twice the amount, and you're going to gain twice the amount of FP you would if you're using other weapons, or most other weapons, I should say. And that really allows you to just walk up, hit Troll's Roar, tank whatever is going to hit you, critically strike it, kill it, go back to full health, and just repeat this over and over and really just honey badger your way through the game, not giving a fuck at all. Obviously, this does not work as well on a boss because you typically don't stagger a boss in one Troll's Roar, and you probably don't stagger most bosses in one Troll's Roar and a follow-up attack. So you have to be a bit more, you know, cautious about what you're doing. You can't just walk up unless you have something like actually the whole Bull Goat's armor set. With that, you might be able to pull that off in that scenario. But without that, it's going to be very tough. The reason we use the Dragon Crest Shield Talisman with those two is because that reduces the damage you take. This allows you to go up and get hit and then recover enough health that you're back up to full health. So you really don't care if you get hit as long as you don't get like hit like twice in a row and staggered or you get hit by some crazy heavy attack if you don't have like maximum poise. So that really reduces the damage, allowing you to just heal back up to full. And then we also use the Roar Medallion because this increases the damage of Troll Roar, which is purely physical damage, by the way. And it also increases the damage of your follow-up swing, so you get damage from both of those things. Now, when I'm in a boss fight, I usually swap out the Assassin's Daggers for Shard of Alexander and Green Turtle Talisman. This is to give you more damage with the Roar, 
and to give you back stamina because you're going to be attacking a lot more regularly and you're going to run just chew through stamina using a colossal weapon but when you're out on the landscape if you just use a troll's roar and then critically strike something troll's roar critically strike something you're not really worried too much about your stamina recovery and you're not really too worried about um, how much damage short you know troll's roar is doing so uh, because you're killing them with that follow-up strike you know and it's not really as important so I don't really use any buffs with this build at all. Like, you're literally just running around and attacking, and you, you use this combo, the Trolls Roar follow-up attack as necessary combo, um, using the critical strikes whenever you can, run up and you know backstab enemies if you have to to get critical strikes as well, in order to just keep regaining FP and HP. It's one of the reasons we're able to get away with very low mind with this build, even though Trolls Roar costs 22 FP, is because you gain most of it back, or all of it back, every time you pull off that combo. It's kind of busted, honestly. Um, and it works against enemies that are hard to stagger a lot of the time too because even if they don't get staggered by Troll's Roar They'll get staggered by the follow-up attack as long as you don't get staggered by whatever attack they do during that animation And if you have very high poise, that's not likely to happen Another really great thing about this build too is that you can buff your weapon with something like you can use blood grease or magic grease or Fire grease or whatever kind of grease you want on your weapon as well to further boost your damage on top of what you're already doing so if you're fighting an enemy that's like weak to magic or something, you can use like magic grease on it to get some more damage out of it and give you even more damage. So the stats I have for this build are 53 Vigor, 18 Mind, 36 Endurance, 80 Strength, 12 Dexterity, 9 Intelligence, 14 Faith, and 9 Arcane. So the 9 Intelligence, 14 Faith, 9 Arcane are because of my class, so disregard those completely. If you're a different class, you'll have different values for these, but you really don't need anything in these stats. So the lower these are, the higher your other stats will be, and that will be better for you in this build. So... Ideally, you'd have a class that didn't have very much Intelligence, Faith, or Arcane. When it comes to Vigor, we have 53 here because you're going to be trading damage. This is a very aggressive build. You don't mind getting hit, but when you get hit, you want to make sure you take, you know, you have a huge health reserve so that you can heal up afterward and, you know, swing through those attacks and not really worry about how much damage you're taking. 18 Mind is there because you don't really need much Mind for this build. You don't need a ton of FP. You're using Troll's Roar. The follow-up attack costs no FP. But again, if you're critically striking enemies after the Troll's Roar, you're going to gain all that back with the Assassin Cerulean Dagger. So it's not even, you know, all you basically need is to be able to cast it a few times without having to chug a pop. Because when you get into boss fights, you're not going to be staggering them with every hit and getting that back. So you don't want to, like, you know, cast it once or twice and then, you know, have to chug a pot or three times to chug a pot. So, you know, this way you're gaining at least uh, five uses because that's 110 FP. It costs 22, so you can use it five times. Before you're going to check a pot. Endurance is there to give us just enough equip load in order to be able to wear the heavy armor that we're using. We're not trying to medium roll with this build. If you were trying to medium roll, you'd have to have way more endurance in order to make that happen, or you'd have to swap out one of the talismans for something like Great Jar's Arsenal, which you can do if you want to be able to medium roll. Some people prefer that, but you're just keep in mind you're going to have to invest way more in endurance, probably swap out like Green Troll Talisman or Shard of Alexander or something like that for the Great Jar's Talisman or even Dragon Crest Shield Talisman. Um, in order to do that, but the way I do it, because I don't really worry about getting hit, I'm not really worried about dodging, I'm just walking up, trolls roar, I get hit, whatever, critically strike, not a big deal. It's a little more challenging during boss fights, you know, learning to fat roll, but it's not something that you can't do. But it, again, if you'd prefer to change this, you'll have to increase endurance significantly in order to build a medium roll. Strength is at 80 because we have S scaling and strength, so even taking this all the way up to like 99, you're going to get really good damage with this weapon. So as you progress this build forward, you want to be able to get that bull goat's armor set and, you know, be able to get maximum poise. And once you have enough endurance for that, you're probably going to keep increasing strength to further boost your damage if you're taking this up higher. And we don't need dexterity for this build at all, so that's just what I had for my class. So one final tip for this build, if you're using the Flask of Wonders Physique, you're going to want the Green Burst Crystal Tier. This is going to increase your stamina recovery. Again, you're going to chew through stamina with this build, so you want to be able to recover it as fast as you can. And using, you can pretty much use whatever else you want. You can use the one that increases the poise damage that you deal, so you can stagger bosses with like one shout and a follow-up. Um, that'll allow you to get a lot of, you know, critical strikes on bosses, which is a really good strategy for bosses you know you can stagger easily. Uh, or you can use one that increases your protection or one that increases your poise. So maybe you're fighting an enemy like a Malakath or something that's got like really heavy hitting attacks. Maybe you want to be able to poise through those for about 30 seconds. You can use that. That wraps up this level 150 build. We have probably like a handful of 150 builds left before we get to 200. It may be coming out a little bit slow over the next couple days. I just got back uh, to the Asia side of the world, so my you know my schedule's all kind of messed up at the moment. But um, we have the Dark Moon Spellblade, 
We have probably a bow build coming. We probably have an upgrade to the Scorching Slayer build. And I think there's like a couple other builds maybe, but it's not more than about three, four builds tops before we get into level 200 ones. So if you guys have any more questions, please leave them below. Otherwise, stay tuned for more builds.